In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get quickly up to speed with Viper. This is a programming language for smart contracts, which can be deployed to Ethereum or other EVM blockchains. My name is James Buccini, and I've been a blockchain developer since 2017. I mainly work with Solidity, and this tutorial is going to be really focused for people that have already maybe deployed their first smart contracts and have a basic understanding of how blockchains work and have maybe done a little bit of work in Solidity previously. Let's dive straight into the code. So the first thing you'll notice are the code comments are different in Viper. You've got a hash instead of a double slash and where you want multiple lines, you use three question marks. Versioning is slightly less common, um, like set in the Solidity compiler version that you would do. Um, it's, it's not as often seen, but you can do it with at version and then put a, as you were a set version or greater than 0.4.0. We can give the contract a title, author, license, and then we can use kind of that spec standard documentation. We can then go ahead and set state variables in Viper. For this, we're going to be using amount and then public, which define, gives it a getter value. So by defining it as a public value, we actually create a function that someone can call externally to get that value out of the blockchain. As with all blockchain languages, this is strongly typed, so we have to set the type when we're defining a variable. This is uint256, or an unsigned integer, or a number. We then define an external function. This is actually a constructor argument, which only runs once when you first deploy the, the contract code. So we're gonna set that amount to 69420. If we go into Remix now, we can actually run this code. This is at remix.ethereum.org. We're gonna paste the code in. We're also going to have to have the Viper plugin activated, which will give us this little tab here. We can compile this. That's done, and we can deploy it. Let's deploy it locally first. You can see we've got this contract here, and once it's been deployed, this actually runs itself. So the constructor argument is run when at deployment, and we can call amount, which is gives us this 69420 value. You see that the amount function is actually the same name as the variable. So this getter function is the named exactly the same as the variable name. Okay, so if we scroll down now, I've got the next example. We're looking at interfaces, events, and structs. So an interface here is a way to interact with a third-party contract. We're interacting with an ERC20 token here. So we've got a transfer function, a balance or function. We can then call these with, from within our contract to do things like transfer tokens from the contract address to a user's address, for example. We can also check the balance of different users' funds. So we can, if we have like the USDC contract address in there, we could check to see how many USDC each user has. We're then gonna go ahead and define an event. We're gonna call this the deposit. We're gonna assign it two 32 byte slots. One is for indexed address and one is for a UINT256. So the indexing allows us to look up that data easier when we're using third-party tools to check events and kind of historical data for transactions. And that's gonna allow us to call this event at a later date in the contract. We're then gonna define a struct. This is gonna be called deposits. We're gonna have a user address in the event 256 again. And we're gonna create a dynamic array for this. So dynamic arrays are a little bit different in Viper in that we have to define a higher end bound. So this array can never get bigger than 128. It's actually not ideal for this contract, but it, it kind of forces you to think about what happens um, once that array gets too big. Like with a lot of problems that have happened in contracts in the past where kind of a, an array has got out of size and it means that the gas limit has been reached when you're trying to do a transaction which basically renders the contract useless and it can cause things like funds getting stuck within a contract. We're going to create a hash map which is equivalent of a mapping in Solidity so that every address has a, a corresponding UN 256 balance and then we're going to define an external payable function so people can send ETH to this, con this contract function. Now we're going to access this deposits array. We're using the self.deposits here because it's a state variable we're referring to it as self. And then dot append is the equivalent of dot push. We're pushing a value into this array. The value we're pushing is this deposit struct, which includes the message dot sender and the message dot value. The message dot value is the amount of ETH that has been sent with the transaction. 
We're going to find a deposit event with both variables and add the message.value to the balance of message.sender. We're starting to get more into a real world example here of how Viper is used for transferring funds in and out of smart contracts on chain, albeit with this hideous dynamic array. The next example looks at statements and loops. Let's go ahead and put this one into Remix as well. We'll go through this there. So we've got an even numbers and odd numbers, both public variables, unit 256. We're then going to define an external function, run, and we're going to take an input value and a output value, both numbers. Then we're going to do a for loop, so for i in range 100. So this is going to loop over 100 times, and i is going to be increased each time. If i is greater than the max, which is the value we passed in, we're going to break. So at any point, we're going to break out of this loop if that value of i is greater than the value we gave to the function. Then elif, we, this is the equivalent of if else. If i is um, modulus 2, which basically means even, then we're going to add one to the even numbers. Else, if not, we're going to add to the odd numbers. Note that there's no curly brackets here. Um, Viper is a Python-esque language, so we use an indentation, which is four spaces, rather than using curly brackets throughout the code. For this block of code within this if statement, for example, we'd add anything else with the four spaces in here. Let's go ahead and deploy this. I'm going to compile it first, and then I'm going to go and deploy it. I'm going to deploy this one to MetaMask, uh, the Gorelli testnet, to show you how you deploy this in production. This could be just as easily be a Ethereum or other, any other EVM blockchain. The benefit of using a testnet is that the Gorelli ETH isn't actually real. It's not valued at anything. So we'd connect the ingested MetaMask provider, make sure the network's correct. You can change the network by changing it in MetaMask and confirm the transaction. What we should get is this contract down here. We can give this a value here of say nine, run the transaction. Because we're writing data to the chain, we actually have to sign a transaction and pay a gas fee because we're updating this data here, we're updating the state variables, so we're restoring additional data or modifying the data on chain, which um, costs funds. And then once that's gone through, we can check even numbers and odd numbers. Even numbers is five, odd numbers is four, because the value we passed in was nine. Let's go back to the tutorial now. And we've got some more snippets to look at. Viper is less modular, and for things like ownership, you're not going to import the ownable library from Open Zeppelin. You actually define a state variable here. We then set this to message.sender in the constructor argument. And then we define an internal function. So define only owner. If message.sender is not the owner of the contract, then we're going to raise an error. It's going to be a revert, basically. And then we're going to use this within an external function. So anyone can call this send all, pass in an address. But it's going to check that the person that's calling that transaction is actually the owner of the contract. If not, it's going to revert. And then finally, it's, if that's all OK, it's going to send the funds within the contract to self.balance. Uh, this contract code is slightly gameable in that we can send the contract of some ETH to update the owner of the contract. Probably not something you want to do in production. In the next example here, we're using some of the internal Viper functions like raw call and concat to build this. Uh, raw call for the ERC20 transfer function. We're passing in some values here. It's probably a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial, but if we go down and have a look at the documentation, there is a list of built-in functions that you can use. So if you're going to be using Viper a lot, it's going to be worth reading through all these. There's internal functions for things like re-entrancy guards. It's just a good to have an idea of what is available and what's built into the language. There's also some other resources here. There's Viper by example. The guy that um, created this site actually has a great YouTube channel as well. I'll try and put a link up there somewhere. Then we have some code repositories here. The famous one being Curve. These guys are using Viper in production for a billion dollar DeFi protocol. They're one of the best teams in DeFi and a great focus on decentralization and it, it, like just reading through this code. Again, if you're going to be using Viper a lot, then it'd be worth just kind of getting a feel for the structure of it and what good code looks like. 
When it comes to testing and deploying, Viper is actually a module within um, Python, so you can install that, you can install ETH Brownie. There's functional, you can actually kind of use PyTest as well to create your unit tests within Python. When it comes to deployment, you can do it in Remix like we did previously with small smart contracts. Once you start to get into more complex systems, you're probably going to want to create a Python-based deployment script. And obviously, EtherScan supports Viper as well, so the code can be uploaded to EtherScan to verify the contract and people can see what they're interacting with and actually interact with it directly from within EtherScan. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The full post and all the code examples are linked to in the description. Go ahead and get into Remix and give them a try. If you want to learn more about blockchain development and decentralized finances, subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and thank you for watching.